Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Audible is the destination for thrilling audio entertainment with next listen recommendations to habituate every type of thriller listener. The time is now more than ever to embrace the breathtaking, sinister, and shocking tales that have enthralled you, especially with brand new exclusive thrillers from best-selling authors who are guaranteed to keep you gripped. So, Ronnie, I recently downloaded Squeeze Me by Carl Hyacin, mainly because it shows a martini glass with a snake tail wrapped around it. I mean, what else needs to be said? And I am very excited to listen to it later today. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. Do you struggle trying to reach those corner lashes when applying mascara? L'Oreal Paris' new Panorama Mascara catches every lash for corner-to-corner volume. Your sister uh, has been using this, right? She loves it, yes. They sent me some, and I gave it to my sister and my nieces. And actually, I looked at, uh, I saw my niece the other day and was like, your eyelashes, is that the new mascara? She's like, yes, look at them. (laughs) They were like fanned out. I mean, this is a great product. You can buy Panorama Mascara on Amazon today. Want to see life in Panorama with fully fanned out lashes? Now you can with L'Oreal Paris Panorama Mascara that creates corner-to-corner panoramic lash volume. Okay, it's time to commit. 2024 is the year for prioritizing yourself. Begin your new smile journey with Byte, and you could start seeing results in just two to three weeks. Just order your at-home impression kit today for only $14.95 at Byte.com. Byte Clear Aligners are doctor-directed and delivered to your door. Treatment costs thousands less than braces. Plus, they offer financing options, accept eligible insurance, and you can pay with your HSA, FSA. Get 80% off your impression kit when you use code WONDERY at Byte.com. That's B-Y-T-E dot com. Start your confidence journey today with Byte. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is part two of a two-part recap. If you're wondering where part one was, well, go check in the feed and be sure to subscribe so that way you always get your episodes. But enough of that. Let's get right back into the episode. So basically, there's this gala, and they're going to go to it, and then they've got a seating chart, and everything. And so they're, since the whole cast is going, they're going to have to like separate out into different tables because of Kaka Kristen. Yes, and um, they show the guy, their friend Jared. I think it's Jared, right? Yeah, Jared left. Um, Jared got stem cells that saved his life. And so now he has a charity. And Jared tells people off because this is how he talks. He's like, you want to hear about it? Let me tell you what Kristen did. Like, I, I can't <laughs> wait to see more of Jared. But Jared started a charity in Los Angeles, of all places, called Be The Match. Did now he start it. it? He started it. Or... I think so. I mean, it, it, it says... Irregardless. Um, uh, wait, I became aware of the Be The Match organization and the gala itself through my best friend, Jared. Oh, no, I don't think he started it. I think he's just throwing a party for it. It's just weird to have a, a gala in LA called Be The Match because you literally can't even smoke at the bottom of a hill there. They're like, we are all going to die if you do that. So I just feel <laughs> I like it's like an it. unsafe way. <laughs> it's unsafe. Like, you can have this, just not in the hills or anywhere near it. <laughs> Someone's going to get very confused, and between all these charities on these shows, they're, they're going to donate to something called Be the Homeless. <laughs> but not the Toothless. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so he, yeah, so he, there's this organization, they're going to a gala for it, and um, they have to figure out, you know, the, the, the planner is like, um, well, we have two tables, but the big concern, or maybe this is Jared who was saying it, saying like, I've got some crazy texts from from Kristen and um, Janet's yeah, like, you know what? Jared. Kristen may have known Jared longer, but Jared and I have gotten unbelievably close over the last couple of years. So the last thing I want or will allow is any drama 
to ruin this night. I'm like, I'm sure Jared would love drama at his event. I know if I, if, listen, we gays love it. Like if, if, I'm, if I'm hosting a charity event, there better be some drama on the side that I can watch from afar and be like, what happened? Tell me everything. Oh my God, that really happened? That's great. Yeah, I'll never forget. Yeah. Jared does want it because he's like, okay, we're going to talk about seating at the charity. And let me tell you why. Because Kristen is starting some shit. And she better not do that at my charity because I will tell you one thing. I will kick her out. You know what? You know what this is about? Kidneys. This is about kidneys, Kristen. It's not about you. Okay? It is about people needing a liver. Okay? That's why I brought this these two cans. No, not kidney beans and actual chopped liver, <laughs> Kristen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know how much I care for you. Oh, no. Um, so oh. Janet's, Janet's like, yeah, it's just like she's so like Delulu. And he's like, Jason's like, Delulu. Alexa, what is Delulu? <laughs> delusional, you idiot. How are you a lawyer? So now we go over to Kaka's apartment. And um, oh, there was there, someone asked me in a DM why we call her Kaka. We're not calling. They, were, they said, "Why are you calling her Kaka?" We're not calling her Kaka. It's because one time they went to Mexico, <laughs> and Kristen walked out on the balcony of her room and went, "Oh, it's a bird, Kaka!" <laughs> and like talked to the bird, and we have just never gotten over it. That was like one of the funniest fucking things I've ever seen. <laughs> it was just so it's great. Just, so we so just go, Kaka. Oh my god, look, there's birds outside. <laughs> <laughs> um, Classic so, Kristen. so she's like i don't know what to wear to the gala tomorrow i'm going through with all my gowns i'm like did i wear this one to jared's event did i wear that one to jared's event before Kristen acting like she has a whole bunch of like <laughs> ball gowns in her apartment I know. they're just t-shirts that just that say so i'm sorry i said it yeah, she's like, I may not know what I'm going to wear tomorrow on my body, but I do know there are going to be Burks on my feet. Coco. <laughs> Can we let the Birkenstocks just, like, let's at least pretend we care about Jared's kidney. You know what I mean? Yeah, so she's like, oh, we'll be sitting at a table with the people that we like, like Nia and Danny, and I believe Jackson Britt, so we like them again now. Maybe Zach. I'm not sure. I don't know if Janet's not going to, is like now going to go over and like take it and decide who gets to sit where, but it's not really that important to me as long as I'm supporting Jared, you know? We're at a table with people who match our kind of energy. So in other words, a table of people who just keep falling out of their chairs. <laughs> And she's like, Zach and I were finally able to make up after Capri. Okay, now you're all going to say Capri? I don't think you all can say Capri. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> Only the guy who claims to go there to meet billionaires can say it because he's douchey enough to like, it makes sense in his personality. To the rest of you, please don't do it, okay? Yeah. And maybe that's how they say it in Italy. But, you know, we don't come back from France saying, can I have a croissant? <laughs> to be fair, it did take Kristen about three years to stop calling it cat pee. So uh, she's like, well, you know what? We both realized that we we're just pawns in Janet's giant manipulation game. Gaga. Janet really loves the shit talking, the planting of seeds, the lighting the match, lighting seeds on fire, fire seeds, forest fires down the hill. Everyone's on fire. The city's going to burn all because of Janet. So you will be donating to the match? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will. Looks like, okay, that's it. We're going to go. We're going to go. I am, Luke's like, I am leaving. It's like, Luke, this is our apartment. Oh, yeah, right. I will stay then. Okay. <laughs> but you know what? Here's what I feel like happened. Everybody wanted you to fall on the knife for him, Kristen. I mean, so, okay, maybe you slipped up and betrayed some trust, but you didn't make up this narrative. Okay. And that's not fair for you to have to take it on. And let me tell you what's going to happen the next time someone calls you. I'm going to be right here on the phone listening with this ear, just <laughs> like I am to every single call. I can guarantee you that spam likely, motherfucker, you better be ready for me to walk off, kind of. Um, this is so that show that no one is um, wealthy enough to actually own a sword to fall onto, so they have to fall onto a knife instead. It's like, oh, she wants him to fall on the knife. <laughs> maybe someday a sword. <laughs> but right now, just a knife. Maybe, maybe, a, sword. maybe a long nail. <laughs> but for now, yeah, you better, you better watch out, Spork, because you're going to get fallen on. So Kristen's like, now they're starting this whole thing. Like she goes, I think that Janet is taking advantage of the fact that none of us are going to attack her while she's pregnant. Well, fuck that. I will attack you while you're pregnant, bitch. 
<laughs> so the <laughs> baby Kristen. no longer is going to be protected. <laughs> but literally, what did Janet do? I think Janet did exactly what all of us have done. And I mean, both sides of the political spectrum, because I and like you pointed out earlier, Republicans do this to Democrats all the time where it's like, oh, really? Well, guess who doesn't care about the welfare of the children? Ronnie, he's probably a groomer because he is a liberal. You know, like we've all done it in our way, but everybody who's a real liberal in LA has been like, oh my God, did you hear this person is a Republican? That's some racist <laughs> bullshit. And I don't want to hang out with them. I'm a part. Everyone's done it. Like both sides have done it. So I don't understand why Kristen's trying to make it this like Janet sits there and she comes up with ways. She comes up with ways to tear us apart. Well, that that's has, not that's, some I don't huge think... manipulation. I don't think that that has anything to do with, you know, people uh, on, on political spectrums. I think it just has to do with the fact that, like, Janet said this thing and then it, it like blew up into something and then she walks away and she doesn't have any heat on her. And in fact, Michelle's like, yeah, no, everything's fine. We're fine. Whereas Kristen has to take all the heat. So she's like, fuck that. She's the one who started this gossip. And I'm the one who's getting, I'm the one who's getting my head bitten off for it. When Janet's the one who started blabbing in the first place. Not fair. Caca. So Luke, Luke is like, listen, ignore the drama. Ignore the people that you want. Here, do you want to pretend like you want to leave the apartment real quickly? I'm leaving. That was so fun. Okay. But you know what? Like the whole purpose of this is like is not to have a conversation you know and she's like yeah about anything else he goes, exactly He's I've like, done come therapy. on come on fighter stay on message you can do yeah. this okay i've done no therapy yelling. twice i've done therapy twice this week just over this group of people and he goes you don't have to tell me twice babe because i'm ready to get out of this awful city whenever you are oh okay okay it's the city's fault yeah He's yeah, like, can we so. just go back to a place where it's okay to accuse somebody of trying to burn down, you know, AOC's office? <laughs> For Christ's sake. Really, she had it coming. Okay. So Kristen's like, I'm ovulating today, bitch. He's like, I know. I'm leaving. So then um, now the guys, three of the guys, and they have to pack up their babies to go to a fair. You were just saying yesterday about like the prevalence of um carnival games etc on these shows lately and here they are going to the ventura county fair every so, week this show's like three for three last week was at the ski ball place the adult like ski ball place the week before was the county fair party i mean and then they went to the two-bit circus was that the same episode i'm talking about it's like literally every episode is a circus yeah a, this, at this point it's just got to be on purpose so then yeah it's three men and the babies so they go to the fair and um they're all talking about how the, my, my wife won't even bang me these days guys yeah the usual the usual thing i love that these guys are like really so awful and then they're like shocked that no one wants to have sex with them yeah. like they just take themselves out of the equation so they're well, driving. Brittany actually does want to have sex with her husband. That's, Brittany is like the one that's kind of like going against the, the stereotype of the what the men complaining about their wives. You know, <laughs> Brittany's like, he won't even bang me. I'm like a tumbleweed without a dick in it. Like, what do I have to do? Go ch chase him down at the AM FM? <laughs> what was what's supposed to happen? Yeah, um, and let me promise you this: Jax is getting it somewhere. Okay. Yes. Jax is not going to just be celibate for two years. So, yep. and you know, like we said and in episode one, that's what he's doing on his AM. Yeah, he's doing it on his AM PM runs for sure. So, uh, so they're driving in the minivan, and Jack's like, "So, uh, what did you guys think about the other night? Oh, pretty nice, huh?" And Danny's like, "Yeah, it was awesome. Beautiful food. It was amazing. No drama. It was just, you know, what's the right word to describe it?" <laughs> it's like Danny, we don't speak zombie. <laughs> We don't speak zombie Danny. So they're just gossiping. And Jack's, of course, the hero of everything. He's like, you know, me and Kristen are like so close, guys. So close. Me and Kristen. You know, I love her to death. But like, I just don't know how much I can keep protecting Kristen. You know what I mean? It's like, it's hard protecting Kristen, but also like protecting like neighborhoods from Kristen procreating. You know what I mean? I'm just like doing all I can. I'm doing all I can, guys. I guess that's the theme of this show is protecting people. And Danny's like, yeah, well, uh, she says she's done. Like she's like worked on herself so much during therapy. It's like, yeah, but like, I just, I don't understand what like needs to be done. Like who's your therapist? Because that person needs to be fired. Am I right? Everyone. 
So Jesse's like, hey, Isabella, I just saw a sign that said you got to put your shoes and socks on if you want to go to the fair. She's like, I didn't see a sign, you motherfucker. He's like, God damn it, she got me again. <laughs> so now they're they're going into the they go into the fair. They're like walking around doing fair things. <laughs> Cruz goes and picks, starts picking up like goat shit. And Jack's like, no, 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 no. Stop picking up the metaphor of your mother and I's relationship. Stop that. <laughs> uh... Um, so now they start talking about therapy and Jesse's like, our therapy sucks. Okay. Because like the life coach is like, don't touch her. Don't make comments about her ass because she said she was like uncomfortable when I said how hot she was. <laughs> Jack's like, she doesn't like you giving her compliments, which is such a man thing to do. It's like, what? I complimented you. I said you were really hot. You didn't even have the decency to say thank you. <laughs> Who gets mad at being called toots? It's a fucking <laughs> compliment. Not like I slapped her face, I slapped her ass. I mean, Jesus Christ, you can't even communicate with waitresses anymore. Uh, he's like, I'm dealing with just the opposite. I don't do it enough. And he goes, I think it's safe to say that the romantic spark is just not there right now. And I will take the blame. Yeah, let that spark fizzle. It's just not fair to either one of us, especially not fair to my wife. She deserves to have a man who loves her and uh, isn't going to AM, PM quite so much as I am, if you know what I'm saying. So Danny's like, guys, guys, I know you've probably heard this before, but I like how he turns into kind of Matthew McConaughey as he gets like he deeper does. and deeper in I the conversation. That. Guys, guys, hey, uh, answer me this. Riddle me this, Batman. Y'all heard of love languages? They're like, what the fuck, man? He's like, yeah, love languages. That's, you got to know how to communicate with your woman. Now, this is what I do with mine. This is what she loves to hear the most. So I speak in, yes, honey, whatever you need, honey. And we're just happy as pies. Are pies happy? I mean, there are smiles <laughs> and friends put together. Those are called circles. <laughs> Wouldn't say that in front of my wife. She doesn't like pie talk. She does like to hear yes, though. So I say that a lot. <laughs> Am I repressing my inner rage right now? Perhaps. Am I deeply unhappy? I don't know, have my eyes turned into black little orbs because I have so many unspoken things on my mind? Quite possibly, but uh, love languages, they're really working out well for me. Uh, three under two, <laughs> three under two. Uh, uh, what's that theme from <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street that Matthew McConaughey does? Because you know that Danny does that in the bathroom all the time. <laughs> I feel like uh, <laughs> that stupid thing. Jesse's like, yeah, Michelle used to show up in my house wearing a trench coat, and then she'd uh, she'd like let me tie her up and like pour hot wax over her back. Now I can't even get a candle lit in my own house without her being like, it doesn't smell right. It doesn't smell right. <laughs> Danny just goes, life changes, man. Just got to figure it out. That's his way of saying, I don't know what to do with that one. No, you guys like, are fucked. What? That's a lot. <laughs> That's, that's that's a lot. lot of information to just drop ca so casually at the fair. Yeah, <laughs> she used to show up naked. I tie her up and pour hot shit on her. So uh, <laughs> I don't know where, where those days go. You know? So Jack's Jack's like, like, I don't, I don't want life to change. So listen, I had issues. Like I want to sex like three to four times a day, all day, every day. <laughs> and now it's like, uh, do we do it this month? Are we gonna do it this month? Yeah, so who are you fucking three to four times a day at the AM, PM? This is when, this is like when he was like, oh my God, I have to go to the gym five times a day. I just can't stop going to the gym. Yeah, I'll bet you can't. <laughs> so now we go to Kristen and Luke on date night. And so they're walking um, up Robertson and they walk right by Sir, which is kind of funny because at first, like, oh, Sir, of course. And they're like, wait, that's not this show. And they walk by and Kristen's just like, all right, we're going to go to a restaurant. Not this one. Hold on one second. Suck a dick, Diana. <laughs> okay, let's keep walking. Let's go to Soulmate. <laughs> hey, Joe, if you, if you still work there, your soup sucks, Joe. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that it's funny that Kristen lives in the valley, but she's going to dinner right next to Sir to get that attention. It's so Sally Field going to the mall to get recognized. Yeah, in soap dish. So, um, so they they get there and they make a toast to uh, making babies. And Kristen's like, "Oh, we should book tickets to go see your brother." And Luke's like, "Yeah, I, like yeah, we can do that. In fact, you know what? We should go." Do those tickets right now. You know what? I am leaving. I am out of here. I am. Luke, you don't have to do that in literally every room that we're in. Can I take your order? Yes. I will have an Uber because I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> okay. 
felt better. That was a good appetizer, huh, honey? I just so I w- you know I want to spend some time in Colorado in the fall before it gets like too cold. Oh, caca! And Luke's basically saying that like his whole life, everything he's built up has been in Colorado because uh, he does own like 70 acres out there or something and he's like yeah we just have a better circle out there and i think a lot of people if they're like true down-to-earth good people like that's what they are but like la's not la's not all douchebags but maybe only like 90 percent. so now i'm like okay i'm starting to pick up why the guys all hate this guy because he is he is actually a dick yeah, um, I don't get great Luke vibes. I said that episode one. I don't like him. I think he's got weird anger issues. Um, I don't like him. I feel That's also like out. you're also, hanging out with Christian, G- so you can pretty much guarantee it's not a good one. You know what I it's mean? It's like, sir, you have hitched your wagon to a, a horse that's been well documented to be um, pretty unstable, and you've now gone into the barnyard with all these animals and like you can't judge the city based on these clowns you're hanging out with right now and also yeah i don't believe him because he's one of those people who just doesn't want to be looked down for being an la person so they say how much they hate la all the time yet he moved there and he does a podcast and he's dating uh who was at the time an ex-reality star doing a podcast and now he's wormed his way onto her reality show so yeah i don't really believe that you don't want anything to do with la you wouldn't fucking be dating a reality person dude you just wouldn't also like if you loved colorado so much why didn't you just stay in colorado and date someone there or say like Kristen, if you want to date me you have to move out here i'm not going to la but you can't like pretend to move out to la and be like oh, i love it here and then be like no actually i really want to go back to colorado no i do not play those games sir yeah and so She's like, yeah, I mean, my friends can talk about me and Luke. We've only been together 15 minutes, but, and they've been in long marriages, blah, blah. But like, they're like threatened by a really hot giant penis. All right. And he's he's like 32. And that's like why you date 32 year olds. Cause they can go all night long. Yeah. Penis. And then she does her like shimmy thing with her head shake in the camera. She's like, yeah, 31 year old penis. Yeah. Yeah. We get home, we're gonna sa- have sex, smoke some weed, have more sex. And then Luke is like, Yeah, as long as I've got like 10 minutes in between, we're good. Cause otherwise, I am out of there. I am, I'm leaving. I am leaving if I don't get a break. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a crappin's commercial. You can host the best backyard barbecue. When you find a professional on Angie to make your backyard the best around. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Inside to outside. Repairs to renovations. Get started on the Angie app or visit Angie.com today. You can do this when you Angie that. Professional welder Shayna Ford used VR training developed by ForgeFX to hone her skills as a welder. The more time that you spend practicing it, that's what separates a good welder from a great welder. VR training can help students like Shayna repeatedly practice specific skills. Virtual reality definitely helps because the more muscle memory that you have, the smoother your weld is. Explore more stories like Shayna's at meta.com slash metaverseimpact. CarMax is putting peace of mind back in car shopping by putting you in the driver's seat to find a ride that's right for you. Because at CarMax, we believe you shouldn't just settle for a car. You should love your car. That's why every car we sell is CarMax certified quality so you can be sure with upfront pricing that's the same for every customer. So don't settle. Find love at first drive and start shopping now at CarMax.com. CarMax, the way car buying should be. So then Danny and Nia, um, they're getting dressed for the gala. And then um, Luke's talking about how they're going to have a date night. I don't know. What are they talking no, about? No, so what happens well, well, while part. Danny and Nia are like setting up for the, for like, not setting up, but like getting dressed or whatever, um, uh, or are showing, not getting dressed, but showing off the looks and everything. He's talking about how he and Brittany basically helped set up this romantic date for Luke and um, Luke and Kristen. Oh, so basically, okay, Brittany, I yeah, I 
Yeah, so, oh, because he's going, I'm sorry, he's going to be doing this. Wow, this timeline's very tricky at this section. He's going to be helping because Luke has asked Danny to help set up and put out rose petals and everything. So um, Danny is, uh, Danny and Brittany are going to be doing that. So then we go back to Postulmate. And Luke is talking about how, um, you know, like, you know, having a family and everything, like wondering, like, where's the best landing spot? And Kristen's like, so here's my thinking. California's like, very important to me. Like, I can't leave California. I have like so much nothing obligations over here that like, I just can't, I can't leave. Oh, Kristen, you'll, you'll be fine. You're going to Montana. You can wear Burks there. You know what I mean? It's not like you're going to a land where you have to change your shoes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you'll fit in more in Montana, maybe. And she says that she's not really married to L.A., but hi, she just got back on TV. So, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, so that's, then, that's what she's really saying, right? Yeah, pretty much. It's a long conversation for him to pretend he doesn't want to be on TV while he's on TV, sucking all of this up. So then we go to um, Brittany meeting Danny to set up the romantic massage night that they... <laughs> <laughs> so Danny's like, oh my God, I peed myself a little bit, guys. Because instead of that dog being named Jill, I think Killer would have been a better name. I almost got killed by a dog setting up a night for my wife. Almost died. I have something to say here. Um, I think it's generally generally speaking, I think it's like very, very funny when people name their pets very like ordinary human names like i once met a dog named bob <laughs> and that was like hilarious to me there once was a show on cbs about like it was called like the great great american dog and or something like that and there was a dog named andrew and i just was like it was just like very funny but that being said who names their german shepherd jill <laughs> just like jill this is Jill. This is Jill. I mean, I was like cracking up, but I'm also thinking like, I feel like most people have like more fun names for their dogs than Jill. And it's nothing against the Jills that we all know and love. Nothing against Jill's Aaron. <laughs> but why are you naming your German Shepherd Jill? Yeah. I like, you know, I like a good human name, like a little, hey, it's my dog, Ruth. No, like <laughs> I would love that. Dog. Oh my god, I would totally name a dog Ruth, a hundred percent. But yeah. Jill is just—it just cracks me up. Jill, yeah, Jill. <laughs> this is like my basic dog. Big, my very dog, very Jill. basic dog. So then, um, Brittany's like, oh, "I'm so happy to make a party for Luke and Christian, but I can't help but think tumbleweeds. Am I right? <laughs> crying right now, or laughing? I don't really know." <laughs> I have been begging him, please do something romantic for me. Like at least put out some triscuits and cheese whiz. And now I'm setting up somebody else's romantic self instead. <laughs> cry, 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 cry. I told him, hey, you better take notes. Look what Luke is doing for Christine. Mm. <laughs> I mean, technically, you're doing it. So I yeah. think it's, it's pretty fitting, you know. So back at Soulmate, now they're talking about uh, how Danny made a good point about, you know, a premarital counselor. And, you know, we none of us really understand what it's like the money and the time it goes into raising a baby and we should talk about it with someone professional, you know, hopefully someone professional who doesn't live in LA. <laughs> okay. Let's, uh, let's get a Montana professional. Okay. <laughs> I want them to be able to use a rope on a pig. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, they're talking about like, um, yeah, they're talking about this sort of stuff. And Chris is like, well, my big, I'm, you know, I'm the biggest worry word that you know. So that is not something that I ever worry about. Like kids growing up in California, in Los Angeles, in the Valley, specifically with our group of people. You know, it takes a village. Or in our case, it takes um, a bunch of RVs. And you know what? We're going to do it. Yeah. So then people are driving to the, to the gala. And Brittany and Jax and Janet are all together in one car. And um, this is where they're like, wait a minute, how much money? Janet's like, Jason, how much money do I get to spend for the kidneys? And Jason's like, 2500 And Jax is like, yeah, Brittany, we need to talk about that. I mean, people don't really need their kidneys, I don't think. That is kind of the point. It's like kind of like your gallbladder or your ear. <laughs> like, who needs them? <laughs> Am I right? I'm like, no, oh, no. 
Really, all people need is a mouth and a nose. <laughs> Sometimes not even a mouth. Let's be honest. Dick. Is it a dick transplant? Otherwise, we're spending $5. And that's it, Brittany. She's like, whoa, wait a minute. Oh. Yeah, he's basically like, um, yeah, our kid has to go to school now. And uh, AM, PM, those, those bills, like those coffees don't pay for themselves. So uh, $10 budget. And here's a stack of Groupons you can also leave at the table uh, next to the item you want. And she's like, but why? And so he says like 2000 but like we all know afterwards when the cameras weren't there, he was like, it's going to be like $45. Yeah. Nobody on the show is giving $2,500. <laughs> no <laughs> one is. That. No one is. <laughs> so they so, go to the gala. Be the match. And um, Jax is like, oh, my God, I need a hors d'oeuvre. <laughs> this is um, this is like a, a proper gala. Like this is at the Skirball Center, which is like. A nice place and there's like lots of people there this is this is a full-on true gala and <laughs> i don't know what any of these jokers are doing here like they don't they they seem like ill-equipped for this experience <laughs> so then um more people come and jason's like oh my god i feel so underdressed next to danny look at how good danny looks and danny's like yeah i thought for sure man you were gonna be dressed with a tux and a bow tie i mean i like attention but i don't need to be the best looking and the best dressed you know what i mean <laughs> Yeah, Danny's like self conscious about like dressing nicely. Did you also catch this moment where um, like a waiter or a waitress uh, came by with like, there was like one mac and cheese ball? It's like, anyone, anyone want this mac and cheese ball? Anyone want it? And then like no one was taking it. So Brittany was like, well, I'm hungry. I'm going to take it. So she takes it and then she like eats it and she's like, well, I'm hungry. And then Jax goes, so are all of us. Sort of implying like, have some self control. I was like, wow, classic Jax. How gross. Just when you, just when you, uh, thought Jesse was the worst. Jax is always there to remind us that he, you know he's the number one asshole in this group. Yeah, God, gross, dude. And also not shocking at all. Um, so then uh, Michelle and Jesse come, and Zach's like, "Oh my God, Jesse, look at that jacket. He looks like he's walking into a bar in Miami in the '80s, and he's about to snort a line of cocaine." the length of the bar so basically like Jax is at breakfast <laughs> yeah and like debbie harry's playing because it's the 80s and that's why there's cocaine there and that's why it's on a bar but it's like a very long bar i just want to illustrate that this is a particularly long bar which means it's a particularly long line of cocaine it's like okay zach we get we got your we got your joke so um, john johnson is there probably a republican you heard it from janet first <laughs> So Jason's like, wow, Jesse, this blazer. So you wear this all day? You show a house in this? He's like, nah, nah. This is like a real dinner jacket, man. Yeah. So um, Jax takes Jesse to the bar while Jasmine and Ian and Britt and Zach are talking about Kristen. And Zach is like, so is Kristen at our table or your table? And Brittany's like, my table. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, she could have been at our table too. Yeah, it's like butter. She's at your table. And Jasmine's like, well, I said I don't care. I just, listen, I can fake it. I can be like, bless your heart. And so she's like, yeah, I don't know if Kristen's going to start a scene. You just don't know with her. But I'm just going to have to love her from afar for the moment because she's crazy. So Nia's like, look, I'm trying to chug my wine so I can go pump my breast milk, you know? I mean, I know that doesn't make much sense, but. Yeah. And then um, so now Kristen shows up alone and everything. And Luke isn't there because Jill is super, super sick. She has diarrhea. Everyone, Jill has diarrhea. That's actually not a human. It's a dog named Jill. And the dog has diarrhea, but she will be fine. It's like, thank <laughs> Just thanks, thanks for announcing the diarrhea that your dog is experiencing. To this, it's just this so. Fancy gala. Ugh, it's like the things they catch on the mics because they're actually talking kind of quiet. But the, the producers are like, you know that part about the diarrhea? Make sure we get that in there. Make sure. <laughs> I want the camera to look like it's kind of sneaking around the guys just so we can catch this very secret conversation. We have cameras here, right? Okay, let's get that. Print it. And they, <laughs> they listen to the audio later. It's like diarrhea. Yeah. She's got diarrhea pretty bad. And Brittany's like, oh my God, diarrhea. Jill's like, did you have to? You know, I'm not even a cast member on this show. I'm, 
First of all, I got interrupted by two people who I thought were intruders. They're not my mother nor my father. And then they just left all these delicious rose petals around. How was I supposed to know they were a laxative for me? Exactly. It's the rose petals. <laughs> so then uh, flashback uh, to Jesse yelling, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up at the dinner party. And Brittany's like, um, they're still talking about the dog pooping because of the dog petal or the flower petals. <laughs> This really did keep going. That's funny. And Chris is like, I don't think it was a rose petal. And Brittany's like, Really? Because I hope that that dog had those rose petals, and every time it's pooping, it's thinking, Brittany deserves better. <laughs> <laughs> How you ever see that tumbleweed go by, followed by diarrhea, dog diarrhea? So Kristen's like, yeah, well, I think she accidentally ate something. And uh, cause, like, the, over the weekend, she was fine. But like, she had diarrhea in my apartment before. And I just didn't want to have diarrhea in the new apartment. So anyway, God, there's been so much diarrhea. I mean, it's just like you walk in. It's just like diarrhea here, diarrhea there, everywhere, diarrhea, everywhere, diarrhea. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Okay. It's enough diarrhea talk for me. I had enough. <laughs> I've reached my limit of the D word, the D talking. All right. Did you say I was the D word? <laughs> So Michelle's like, my strategy is not to pay attention to Kristen. I'm a woman. I'm elbow skin. I'm a clown car. I'm a noun. I'm Kristen a is Kristen I'm is like so. a cake for gay people against my religious beliefs, and I shall ignore her. I just keep thinking to myself, charity event. So I hope Kristen doesn't ruin another night so now everybody <laughs> sits down and um kristen sits with britney she's like oh my god thank god i prefer this table to the other table hey can you believe that we had to arrange tables based on who to be around who <laughs> like welcome to reality tv zach i was like oh how the tables have turned because you know it's a table situation so it's like it, what it really is is a play on words now imagine the tables were in the 80s okay are we there are we visualizing it because the joke is going to continue <laughs> Hey, Michelle, I just wanted to take this moment to apologize to you because I didn't really do anything to you that was all like Kristen, but I mean, I did it to you by proxy, so like, I'm sorry by proxy. Okay. She's like, it's okay. I'm like, what? What? And she's like, you know what? I'm sure there was some sort of conversation that happened between Janet, Jasmine, and Zach, but they never brought it up. They didn't tell it to everybody. So it's like, okay. So again, you actually are not upset about the allegations. You're just upset that people might think about the allegations or might know about yes. the allegations. Drawing attention to the allegations. But my thing is, like, I just want to move forward from it. And so, like, maybe you could just talk to Kristen and be like, listen, I don't want to say forgive you, but, like, I'm willing to move past that because I know you want an apology and I feel like she's willing to give you an apology. Also, there's, like, a Kesha CD in the silent auction. I was wondering if you could spot me $10. <laughs> Someone I hope never stays silent again, Kasha. <sighs> yeah, hey, there's like a Willa Ford poster over there. Do you have about $45 to the silent auction? <laughs> So um, he's like, it's my duty as someone who comes about Kristen to get the second car off. So over at Kristen's table, Mia's like, so you guys did a whole setup at Kristen's place with flowers? Like, how did that go? Tell us about it. Was it magical? <laughs> And Kristen's like, yeah, we used the massage table, but I didn't get a massage. <laughs> I was ovulating. Yeah, yeah. We had sex. Um, and Jack's so like... Is this it? You knocked up? You think that was the one? You think that was the pounder that got yeah. you? Yeah. It was real magical. It was real magical. We were like doing it, but also talking about how to raise the children in LA. It was great. And Nia's like, and you were laying flat, right? No legs up. Huh? And so um, then Jesse, over Jesse's table, they're talking, they're telling the story about how they met. There's someone was like, tell us your love story, which is more like, tell us your future hate story. So Jess is like, yeah, well, we had, uh, we had an office meeting and I was like, why don't we meet for coffee? And she's like, yeah. And then we were supposed to like have a date night. And I was like, wow, this guy's terrible. He has a terrible personality. I don't understand how he's ever a model. He has a dent in his hair. I never want to see him again. Yeah. And now we're married. Let me tell you the real story. We had coffee. I knew he wasn't the one, but I was attracted to him. 
So here we are, married with a baby. I was like, wow, <laughs> this is. I'm in the lo- world's story. longest booty call. <laughs> yeah, she says. Uh, so I, she says I canceled our date because I hated him, but then I went out with my girlfriends instead, and I got really drunk and I wanted a booty call. So it's just like the booty call that never ended. <laughs> <laughs> Let this be a lesson to people. So yeah, I don't know what Zach, that lesson is really, but um, yeah, which is don't date people like Jesse. So <laughs> Zach is, he's like trying to help things out. He's like, okay, Michelle and Jesse, like, do you want to like come talk with Kristen? Let's do this. Would it be okay if we chat for a moment? Like, I feel like tonight's been like such a positive night. Like I totally won the vitamin C cassette. So I think we're just like ride that high. And I feel like if you two just like pull together, I think it'd be a good idea for us all to talk. How do you feel about that cause? So then um, they go outside to talk like the summit. And Jesse's like, baby, you cold? And Michelle's like, yeah, I'm cold. And he's like, wow. And he doesn't give her his jacket. (laughs) (laughs) So then Michelle's like, let's just try to relax and let Kristen speak right now. And he goes, oh, I'm plenty relaxed. I'm plenty relaxed. She's like, (laughs) I would be too if I just wasn't freezing to death. (laughs) Yeah, sucks for you. (laughs) Okay, here they come. Here they come. So Kristen's like, oh, Michelle, I just want to say I love you. I love you so, so much. And I know more than anyone how harmful like words can be. And when they're put on you, when they're completely not true. <laughs> and I said something I should not have repeated. Michelle goes, and I think that's why we're upset because you keep saying the word repeated and everybody is denying that comment. Well, but we just had this conversation. Like, remember? Because like Jasmine, I mean, I'm sorry. Like, oh, really? You said the word Jasmine. Oh my fucking God. Forget it. Are you kidding? Oh, sorry. This is Je- Jesse. Oh my fucking God. Forget it. Are you fucking kidding Jesus Christ. Oh, no, no, we're going backwards. We're going backwards. Ride the high, people. Ride the high. So Kristen's like, well, she's saying, you're saying, because I'm saying the word repeated, but it's like, I feel like when we just sit down after dinner, everyone sort of owned what they did. Like, I'm apologizing. I'm re-apologizing. Like, okay, that's all I want you to know. Like, I just want you to know that I'm sorry, and you don't have to accept it if you don't want to, but I am so, so so sorry i just i just need space i need like some like i I can't have you in my face i almost want like it's like we need like something in between us so we can have space like i think i want to build a wall like let's just build that wall between us right now (laughs) and kristen's like it's okay it's up to you i just want you to know and i hope that you believe that i'm sorry and you know me michelle and she goes um, you know what I believe? I believe that you need some help. Wait a minute. <laughs> well, welcome to the party, Michelle. I mean, have you watched the past 10 years of reality TV? <laughs> and Chris was like, oh, yeah, I've been going to therapy for nine years. So, yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. Hey, so, like, Kristen, do you and Jesse, like, possibly want to talk? Like, maybe I can go to the other room and, like, listen to some of Jason's semantics. And Kristen said, <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Um, Jesse, Michelle means a lot to me, and I'm sorry that, um, as your family, as your wife, that I hurt her, and that I disre- disrespected her, and she felt disrespected, especially um, in her home. Is that good enough? Am I, am I allowed back in yet? He's like, do you want to just keep doing this, Kristen? Just doing the same stupid shit over and over in your life? Is that what you want for your life, Kristen? What the fuck, man? Are you going to change, Kristen? Are you going to really change? Deep down. <laughs> Who is coffee for, Kristen? Closers. Coffee is for closers, Kristen. She's like, oh, son, I'm sorry. Oh. I don't do the same things over and over again. How did you just follow up? Where did that coffee table come from? Sorry. I- <laughs> He's like, why are you unzipping Jax's pants? Damn it. I'm sorry. (laughs) Just keep falling into patterns. Okay, I'm going to therapy. (laughs) He's like, you know what? I was very stressed out. I'm sure you were too. I know some of the things I said were very hurtful, and I apologize for that, and I apologize to your pussy boyfriend, Luke, as well. Thank you. And you could, but you guys, just don't be in the middle of everything. Just just be cool, and I think we could be, we'll be fine, okay? And then he pulls a Michelle. He's like, I mean, look, I'm an adult. I'm a father. I'm a person with a career. I'm a person with a house. <laughs> like, I'm a person oh with God. a disgusting blazer. I don't want this roundabout with Kristen. Can we just all move on? 
Yeah. So they decide to make up, kind of, but it's a very cold makeup. And Zach's like, I felt like that went good. Let's get in your car before <laughs> Michelle starts hurling racist threats at us. Hurry, run. <laughs> Oh, it feels so good to not be in a Toyota Tercel from 1996 right now. <laughs> so so uh, that's it. So Michelle and Jesse go back into the gala. Zach and Kristen get into a car and drive off into the sunset. And it's just another deeply entertaining episode of The Valley that concludes. That's it. That'll do it. Well, everybody, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, always love talking to you. We will be back tomorrow with some Summer House and if you want some... Vanderpump Villa coverage, join up at our Patreon. We start that next week and we will oh, get your tickets for uh, London, Dublin, and Birmingham and LA for our May dates. Get that at watchwhatcrappens.com and we'll talk to you all next time. Okay. Bye. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurt. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying. It's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Megan Berg. You can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. We forever love Ava. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. We got our wish. It's Jen Plish. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo. Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a can. And Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch Your Crappens ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com slash survey. As a professional welder, Shayna Ford uses Forge FX to practice over and over, which helps her improve her skills. The more muscle memory that you have, the smoother your weld is. Learn more at meta.com slash metaverse impact.